Last time I made some evil paper squishies, you guys really seem to like them. So I decided to add to my 2D paper squishy collection today by making some more. I've learned a lot from my first time, so I think that you'll find that these new paper squishies are much improved and a whole lot squishier. So our adventure begins with the fat pig with a double chin. You remember? The cannibal one? Help us! Please don't let it eat us! <laughs> Last time you got a good look at all of him, including his derriere. Ew. This time only his face will make an appearance. I also added a mouth and nostrils to complete the look. I then started going in with a pink Posca marker. I kinda just use whatever I'm in the mood to use. This time I'm sticking to my Poscas. I added some shadows around and colored in some parts like his nose and eyelids with a dark reddish pink color. Some of you guys mentioned that this pig reminds you of Waddles from Gravity Falls and yeah, I can definitely see that. That was not intentional and this pig happens to be a lot more cannibalistic and a tiny bit more aggressive them waddles. Paper squishies are pretty easy and simple to make. After drawing the character or whatever it is you want to make a squishy of, you just line up a piece of paper behind it and cut them both out. That way the pig gets a front and a back. I took the front of the cannibal pig and set him down on a plastic container lid, and then I proceeded to add layers of tape over his face. I then Ooh, ripped sorry. it off and lined up the back and folded the tape over. No one will ever know. I used some scissors to clean up some unruly bits. He cleans up rather well. I also left this little gap that I'm going to stuff. Last time I used polyfill stuffing, but this time around I figured I'd try memory foam. I basically just stuffed him full of it, as full as I possibly could. Once he was fat enough for me, I taped up his neck butt. I made a lot of character squishies in this video. Some you might recognize while others are new. For my next paper squishy, I started off by drawing a bunny. Like the cannibal pig, he also has floppy ears instead of pointy ears because I wanted to keep these paper squishies as circular as possible. <coughs> One, because it makes life a whole lot easier because you don't have to cut around all these nooks and crannies, but mostly because when they're one cohesive circle or square or whatever, you can stuff them with a whole lot more stuff which gives him a more satisfying squish. He kinda reminds me of my bunny Pop Rocks that I had when I was a kid. Pop Rocks also had floppy ears. May he rest in peace. I wanted this bunny to look like he was kinda evil. He's nibbling on a very small arm. It's like the size of a carrot. You'd have to do a double take to realize it's an arm. That was kinda the goal. I wanted his expression to look like he was really savoring <laughs> eating the arm. <laughs> yeah. I then took a black Posca marker and started doing the outlines and filling in the little spots he has. I mostly just kept this bunny black and white. I don't do too many black and white characters, so I thought I'd switch things up. At first I thought about making it an albino bunny, but then I decided not to when I added some black spots to him. Plus, with it being black and white, I feel like the arm really stands out and takes center stage. <laughs> I did the shadows on the arm in a darker orange, which I think adds to the whole carrot vibe. I also added some little fingernails to the hand. I gave him a little highlight on the nose, which was making him look a little too cute. So to balance things out, I gave him some red eyes to make him look more evil. So far, so good. But I thought something was missing, so I added some whiskers. But then I didn't like the way that looked, so I edit undo that. I think some sparkle butts will like how sweet he looks. He does look innocent, but obviously his appetite tells another story. By the way, I'll show squishiness and all of that once I'm done making them all. So moving on, for the next paper squishy, I redrew one of the first doll makeovers I ever did on my channel. It was an LOL doll that I turned into a witch. If I just drew her by herself, she wouldn't be as circular as I need these paper squishies to be, so instead I drew her trapped in a bottle. She's basically just this old hag that wears this purple tutu and carries around a wand. Her expression is supposed to look like she's kinda given up on trying to get out of the <laughs> bottle. <laughs> She's just kind of sitting there. She's accepted her fate. I started off by painting the whole bottle a light blue. I know it's supposed to be a clear bottle, but I wanted to give it some color. I just didn't want to leave it white. The bottle is sealed with this cork, so she really is just trapped in there. Her whole look is a little questionable, I'll admit, but I haven't seen a real witch before, so I had to use my imagination. And this <laughs> is what my imagination came up with. 
Her face and hands are green. She's supposed to be like a goblin witch. Her outfit's pretty basic except for the tutu. The purple tutu really spices things up. I use the dark blue Posca marker to make the bottle look more 3D and give it some dimension. I felt like that really made it look like the tutu witch was just sitting in there. It's kind of like a genie in a bottle except not as exciting because you don't get any wishes. Just farts from an old hag. They must have smelled bad enough for someone to bottle her up. <laughs> After some highlights and touch-ups, she was really starting to come together. Oh, and one thing I definitely had to add was an open mouth. LOL dolls are a bit weird and they always have their mouths open, so I wanted the witch to stick to her roots. It kind of looks like she has a mustache. If you're new here and you don't want a sniff of the old hag's farts, trust me, you don't. Then you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. All right, up next is a hedgehog. A very circular hedgehog. I wanted him to look like he's kinda an ugly hedgehog. Not scary looking, more like deranged looking. He's not like your average little cute hedgehog. He's big and freakishly ugly. <laughs> Hedgehog. He's got this long, pointy nose, and he just generally looks unpleasant. He's supposed to look like he's curled up into a little ball and you're looking at the underside of him, as if you were holding him in the palm of your hand and looking down at his cute little <laughs> tummy. So I'm coloring the quills around him brown to start. I colored his body like a light peach color. Then I started defining some quills around him with a brown Posca marker. I'm going to add some more to it later, but this is just to start off. He almost looks like he's looking for a fight. He's not the friendliest hedgehog, to say the least. <laughs> I did this specifically so that sparkle butts don't try to categorize him with rainbows and sparkles. He clearly belongs to the dark side. Eh. To finish him off, I added some black lines to his quills to add some more texture to them. I wanted them to look a bit more spiky. He's really not one to be messed with. Eh. On a slightly more chirpy note, I decided to make my next paper squishy a pirate Arr. parrot. A parrot pirate? Arr. That's a mouthful. I think this is the biggest paper squishy that I made in this video. It definitely has the maximum squish. Yeah. He takes up most of the paper. I think the bigger they are, the better the squishies turn out. So that's something to keep in mind if you do decide to make these. He's supposed to be like a pirate, but instead of giving him a big pirate hat like Captain Gingerbeard has, I instead stuck a bandana on him. He might just be Captain Gingerbeard's parrot, kinda like a sidekick of sorts or something. <laughs> I started coloring his head red. I wanted to give him a color scheme similar to a scarlet macaw. The classic red parrot that you see in a lot of pirate movies. I added some light greens and dark greens and even some yellow to him to make the parrot very colorful. For my scarlet macaw parrot, I painted the beak and feet orange. Though I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be black and white, it's not a completely accurate drawing because, you know, I do what I want. He really just has basic pirate accessories, a black bandana, and an eye patch. I wanted his occupation to be very obvious. He takes his job very seriously. In fact, he went so far as to give himself a scar on his eye. The stitches aren't really necessary. It's just for drama. He wanted to look the part. I also added some shadows to him with darker colors and gave him some feathers around his body. I thought he needed something on his butt, so I went back and added a tail, just with three feathers sticking out of his butt. Then I did some touch-ups and finishing touches. I felt like the bandana needed a little extra flair to add to the drama, so I added a few stripes on it. And last but not least, I made a Gorilla Glue paper squishy. I started off by drawing a rectangle for the bottle, and then I added a little cap on top of it. I wanted it to look like the Gorilla Glue logo, so I'm just drawing the label out with a gorilla holding a sign. Except, my gorilla is looking a little overexcited. I added a little derpy devil at the bottom of the label. I colored the main label orange. I'm just using the colors that the actual Gorilla Glue label has, just trying to keep everything as recognizable as possible. I added a little green background behind the gorilla and then painted the gorilla. I didn't want the bottle to just be white, so I added some gray for where the glue was going to be. My girlfriend informed me gorilla glue is usually always brown instead of gray. I actually do have a bottle of Gorilla Glue on hand. Mine is clear Gorilla Glue. I guess I just always buy the clear one, so yeah. 
that's my defense. I did some outlines and added some bubbles in the glue just to give it some extra something something. I wanted to make it look a little more detailed. After outlining everything in black, I took a little Posca pen and added some fur to the gorilla to make him look more fuzzy. I wrote out gorilla glue on the sign that he's holding. And best hairspray on planet Earth. I wrote that on the label. I wanted it to look like someone took off the actual label and put this fake one on, so I added some little pieces of tape that are kind of sticking the label onto the bottle. And there we go, they're all finished. Here are all the paper squishies I made today, all part of my growing 2D paper squishy collection. Like I said, the memory foam definitely made them a whole lot more squishier. Overall, I'm very happy with how all of them turned out. I hope you guys like them too. Do you like feeding bunnies? <laughs> I do. I'll feed him your worst enemy if you click on the top right or bottom left. <laughs> yes.